Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen. You're watching Israeli News Live. And guys, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, a very controversial subject, but something I think that needs to be said. And, uh, and also at the same time, uh, make a little bit of a clarification on this. And that's the 14th Amendment. I'm actually looking at this right now on my computer. Uh, President Trump yesterday was speaking about signing an executive order to be able to uh, rewrite or revoke or whatever it may be the birthright of citizen citizenship here in the United States. And although I do and clearly I understand why he's wanting to do this, uh, President Trump is looking at this at trying to uh, curb the the influx of refugees into the nation, uh, curbing the loopholes of those that are coming into the nation uh, by the fact their children, they may come here illegally and their children are born here. And of course that gives a loophole for their for the parents in to actually be able to reside in the United States. Because once you're born here, if you have children that are born here, a parent could then apply uh, for a permanent resident visa. <clears throat> and of course is entitled to that as a result of that. So I do understand, and I really wanna make sure that's very clear. I understand that President Trump, I really believe is trying to do this with the interests of the United States uh, at heart, trying to curb uh, this influx of uh, refugees that are coming in, especially in light of the fact that uh, right now RT is reporting that the, the president is uh, sending 15,000 troops to our border as this huge caravan of refugees is headed to our border right now. Uh, so, you know, we're already processing in, I forget how many refugees a year into the nation. And of course, as a result, <clears throat> the unemployment rate for American citizens is always on the rise as we have more migrant uh, situations that are being handled, even the legal ones, not, not to mention the illegal entries into the country. But, as I say this though, there's something though that I'm afraid we are overlooking, actually a couple of things. And one of the big issues that even my wife brings up, and that is that if you begin to tamper with the Constitution of the United States and the amendments to the Constitution, such as in the case of the 14th Amendment, uh, this is a major sacred issue. And to just up and begin to change the amendments, then what's gonna be next? First Amendment, Second Amendment, right to bear arms, your freedom of speech. Uh, if you take away the citizenship of the birthright, which by the way, President Trump would kind of fall into that category in a way himself. Uh, I believe that President Trump's mother was an immigrant to the United States. And of course he was born in the United States. So, you know, a lot of things you could kind of go there. And I'm not looking at trying to, to sling mud in this case. What my issue is though, that 14th Amendment also, under that birthright in the United States, it also affects uh, those that are naturalized citizens as well. My wife is a naturalized citizen of the United States and they're hand in hand together. Uh, if you're born here, even though you may have illegal immigrants for parents, you become a citizen. If you become a naturalized citizen in the same amendment, you have all the safeguards and rights as a native born American. But if you begin to dismantle the 14th Amendment, it may knock out the naturalized citizen as well. But you might say, Steve, where are you going with this though? If you say you understand President Trump and that he's trying to do this for the, for the safeguard of the country, but yet you're also saying too, that if you begin to uh, take the amendment and attack it that way, which now President Trump's backed off the executive order and he's talking about having the Supreme Court look at this and remove it. Um, what are you talking about though? You're speaking about this being a major issue. Well, <clears throat> I believe that this may also be headed in the direction of a prophetic fulfillment. Yeah, believe it or not. Let me, let me explain that. And I know I'm on my phone doing this recording here, so I'm a little bit harder to get this uploaded tonight for you guys. So I'll try to make this short and sweet as I possibly can. I've been sharing with you guys for a long time here 
the different stages that have been set as it was 2,000 years ago. Even when I did the message recently, what side would you be on if you were here 2,000 years ago when Yeshua, Jesus Christ, was here on the earth? What side would you have taken? Because as I've been pointing out, and even more so here recently, uh, like it was 2,000 years ago, we had the House of Judah in the modern state of Israel. 2,000 years ago, we had a Sanhedrin Council. We have a revived Sanhedrin Council. 2,000 years ago, we had a high priest in Israel. We have a high priest already elected in Israel now. Uh, 2,000 years ago, there was Yeshua was here, and he had his apostles and those that were winning converts to Christ. They were, they, they were here as well. There were many of those that were believing the message of, of Yeshua that were Israelis, as you might would call them back then, from the house of Judah. And even today, we have the same thing again. 2,000 years ago. In fact, when Yeshua was here 2,000 years ago, he read from Isaiah's prophecy, Yeshiyahu, and he read in verse 61, he read verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me he, to, to preach the acceptable year. We know all of this. Half of verse 2, he closes the scroll, rolls it back together, hands it to the priest, and says, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, he didn't read the other half of verse 2, as we would call it today. It's just a continuation, not so much breaking up in verses. But in that context, though, it was because it was bringing about judgment. So why wouldn't he bring up the issue? Why didn't he continue on reading? Because the judgment would follow in this day. But it also tells us Yeshua has got to return. The Mashiach, the Messiah, must come, as the Jews say today, they don't believe that Yeshua could be the Messiah, because why? Well, Yeshua, when he was here 2,000 years ago, they say that he never brought in a millennial reign. He didn't, he didn't defeat the Romans and crush the Roman Empire. But yet the Roman Empire is once again in power today in Israel, as well as many other parts of the world, including the United States. Now, the Vatican controls it all. They control the, the NATO movement. They control the United Nations. All these things are under a Roman authority, as well as Israel, under the selling out with Shimon Perez that brought that idolatry back into Israel again. So yes, all the things are being set. And I have been wondering for years now, I even said it to my wife several years back, if Rome is in control, when is this going to come about that the people return to the the place of their nativity, of their ancestral birth for the taxation, for the census, right? Well, President Trump's very actions is going in that direction. Could it be that these other 30 nations may also follow suit as President Trump if he sets that precedent? Not to mention the United States is the biggest part of the NATO military, which is the Roman military, right? So for President Trump, and I don't think he realizes what he's doing when he's doing this, that's why I say his actions, I believe he's doing it from a standpoint to help the American people and help the American economy. And I don't necessarily think that he would want, as he revokes this, to throw all those that are born in the United States out. Probably they would be grandfathered in. Maybe that's his thinking. But nonetheless, by revoking this birthright of citizenship, closing the loophole, as he calls it, that would cause the people to be returned back to the land of their nativity. And what if the Supreme Court decides that the nationalized citizens as well also need to go back to the land of their nativity. Interesting. That would be something that would not only set a precedent, but it might put in motion a biblical prophecy or a biblical stage being set up as it was 2,000 years ago. And in fact, at the birth of Jesus Christ, that's when the decree, right before he was born, that's when that decree come into being. And so I've been looking for something similar to that. Something that would happen that would cause the people to have to return back to their homeland, their, the very places that they were originally from. 
And so President Trump's move and willing to say if he could do it, do an executive order that would revoke the birthright of citizenship in the United States, what if he could do an executive order? What if he did it and the next thing you know, there's a mass moving of people out of the United States? What if he sets the precedent? What if the other 30 nations followed suit as well? What if those 30 nations are part of the Roman Empire of today to begin with? What if the Vatican is behind this? A lot of that's conjecture, but it's something to think about. Listen, I'm Steve with Israeli News Live. Such a blessing to get to talk to you guys this evening. Please stand with the broadcast if you would. Uh, we're traveling right now up here, taking care of my dad. We appreciate your prayers. Uh, I actually, I didn't have comments open for the last couple of days there. I apologize. I did that myself mainly because when we're on the road there, uh, we like to be able to see what's going on, what people are saying there. Uh, and we did. We knew we wouldn't get a chance to be able to see the things you guys were posting. And so we wanted. To, we like to kind of. We like to enjoy seeing what you guys, how you respond. But tonight we'll open it back up again, so you guys can make those comments. Don't forget thumbs up the video. We love to drive YouTube and Google crazy uh, when people appreciate what we're doing. And again, visit our website IsraeliNewsLive.org. And by the way, I do have a special request to ask of you guys. They're doing a lot of suppression of our work including they've been trying to take us out of the top spot. We used to always be on the front page of Google search engine. If you typed in Israel news or news in Israel or anything of that nature there, we were always on the first page of Google and might didn't have to be on the number one spot, but just being on the first page was always nice. Well, we've been pushed down now to about fourth, fifth page back. It's really hard to find us. They're doing that intentionally because they want other independent media that's for Israel to be on the top. You mind, if you guys don't mind, if you have an article or a blog or a website or whatever, write something positive about us and then hyperlink our website, Israeli News Live, to your blog or when you share it on Facebook, mention it by name. Say, check out IsraeliNewsLive.org. That helps us in the rankings. As well, if you take the time to write, type in Google search engine, Israel News, not Israeli News Live, but just Israel News or News in Israel, and then find where we're at on Google search pages, maybe fourth, fifth page back, click on our website or our YouTube channel, whichever the case may be, or both, and that'll drive us up in the search ranks. We appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for your support of the channel. And I apologize to my friends on Patreon. Uh, we just got to get through the crisis here with my dad. I love him very much. And uh, we want him to be around a long time. And so we thank you for praying for him as well. And uh, looking forward to getting back in the saddle there. As soon as we get back in this coming weekend, we'll also be putting up a a a demo video of the conference in Kansas. We're going to share some little insights from the conference in Tennessee so you can get a little taste of what that's going to be about. I'll give with Dr. Steve Pigeon as well, see if he can send us a little bit of uh, his inside information as well. Share that with you guys so you'll know a little bit about what's going to be said. And by the way, it is a two-day event. It's not just going to be one day any longer. It will be on Saturday and Sunday. And on Saturday, the event will start for the for the public at, uh, I think it's either 1.30 or 2 o'clock. I think it's 2 o'clock. There'll be two or three services that Saturday evening, and then it'll be a full day on Sunday. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll try to get an itinerary put together because I know how it is. Some of you guys like Yana a whole lot better than me. I'll make sure you know when she's speaking. So if you want to dodge the old guy here, we can do it. Anyway, God bless you. Love you all. Shalom, shalom.